Hey guys, how are you today? Welcome back to another midweek motivation. Let me share this on our other page here. How's things going in your neck of the woods? Crazy here, right? So I was grilling, well, I should say it was grilling weather yesterday and snow on the ground today. Nuts, right? I think some of my uh, Missouri friends had the same thing go on out there. Kind of kind of crazy uh, seeing snow on the ground here in Lexington, Kentucky this morning, but uh, it's all melted off now. It's all good. So, hey, uh, I hope you are doing well. Uh, it's been an interesting week. Um, it seems like we have a lot of those uh, lately, and especially in social media world. Um, just a side note here, and actually maybe it's a big note, maybe it's the main note. Um, keep looking up, okay? For all my uh, Christian brothers and sisters out there, keep looking up. Always embrace first what it means to be a Christian with what you say, with what you do, and with what you type. Look up and embrace what it means to be a Christian first. We are kingdom people first, right? Absolutely. So be more committed, be more fascinated. I'm saying this to myself too. Be more committed and be more fascinated with God's opinion rather than man's opinion. We'll always win <laughs> if we keep that perspective. Live like Jesus, and everything else will come together as it should. Okay? Okay. So we want to continue uh, the conversation about overcoming stress and worry and fear in our lives. Do you have any stresses in your life right now? Nah, you probably don't. Life's easy peasy for you, right? Uh, I know better. <laughs> Most of us feel a little stressed right now. And the Bible tells us, especially in this uh, study of the 23rd Psalm, that we can go to God, we can go to the Good Shepherd and find relief. That's really good news, isn't it? It's so important to know that God is for us that he's not this angry God that is out to get us, but that he's for us and that he has a design to help you and me flourish and find abundance in this life. It's so important to remember these characteristics about God. Otherwise, we get this tainted view of who he is and why he has certain expectations for our lives. So keep all of that in mind as we talk about the 23rd Psalm again today, because it will fit with where I want to go this afternoon. So we're going to look at the first four verses. Uh, we looked at the first part of verse four last week. We're going to look at the last part of verse four this week, but we'll read the beginning all together so we can get back on the same page here. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. So, we can get a little off track, especially as we navigate, following along with some of the context here, especially when we navigate the shadowy valleys of our lives. We absolutely need some help in those moments. Truth is, we need help every day. We need guidance every day with this walk called life. So, described in this last section of verse 4 are two very basic tools used by uh, the shepherd, a rod and a staff. 
So the rod was about two foot long, two feet, with a heavy knot on, on the end of it, okay? And shepherds were pretty skilled at uh, throwing, at, at hurling uh, this rod at anything that might attack the sheep. And David is telling us that God as the good shepherd will protect us. Uh, the staff was a long stick with a crook at the end of it. And a shepherd would use the staff to draw the sheep close to him and also as a way to guide the sheep. So the staff, think of that this way, whereas the rod provides protection, the staff provides direction and correction, especially if going the wrong way. Ultimately, with a good shepherd, the sheep could be guaranteed to always be walking the right direction with protection because of the shepherd and his use of the rod and the staff. Now, if I was a sheep, which I'm not, literally, but we'll get to that in a moment. If I was a sheep, I should take some comfort in that, that God is protecting me and directing me, potentially even correcting me to a preferred future. That's good stuff. Thank you, shepherd, for doing that in my life. That's positive. Now, back to the sheep thing and the literal thing. Scripture tells us we're all like sheep. In fact, Isaiah 53, 6, pretty famous passage. Many of you know this. We all, us people, like sheep, have gone astray. And so we need, like the sheep, protection, correction, direction in life. And even more so in those dark, shadowy valleys. Now, we like the protection part. <laughs> protect us, right? Protect me, protect me. That feels good. It feels good to be protected. But we're not always so sure about the direction and the correction part. We, we kind of like the rod, but we're not real sure about the staff. And everything about our response to the staff has everything to do with what we believe about God as the Good Shepherd. It has everything to do with what we believe about humanity. First, if you don't believe humanity strays, if you don't believe humanity wanders, then you won't believe in this purpose of correction and direction. Just forget it. You know, that, that won't be for you. <laughs> you, you. You won't embrace correction and direction if you don't think humanity needs it. And so staff theology becomes a little bit difficult. And if you don't believe that God knows better than us how we should live, then you won't certainly, you, will, you, you certainly will not be agreeable to correction and direction from an outside source, this outside source being God the Father. So staff theology, this idea that it is good to have correction and direction in our lives as well as the rod of protection, to have all of it is good in our lives. It's all dependent on how you view God and his goodness and purposes for your life as well as how you view humanity. I hope that makes some sense for you. Here's what we're learning about the Good Shepherd. Just as he has a desire for you and for me to experience less fear and less stress and less worry in our lives, just as he has a desire to protect us, he also has a desire to get you and me to the best versions of ourselves. 
And that will require, because of our human nature, some correction and some direction. And so here's what I want to say to that. Embrace it. Let the correction and the direction convict you. It's okay because it leads to something better. Will the correction hurt? Sure, correction hurts. We've had kids or have had kids, most of us. We've been someone else's kid, right? Correction hurts. Will the direction be embarrassing at times? Absolutely. I thought I was doing this right. Oh, course correction. Sorry, God. It's a little embarrassing. But if you know, listen, this is where we go back to the beginning. If you know the heart of the Father, that heart that desires the best for you, then you're okay with this. You're okay with this kind of shepherd who has the rod and also has the staff. And when you believe this about God the Father, when you trust his heart to have the best interests of your heart in mind, to realize that he wants the very best for you, then you'll embrace the rod and staff. Here's what I kind of think. I'll keep it really simple. If I believe God created me, then I have to believe he knows what's best for me. So I choose to trust that every day. How about you? So trust in the rod, trust in the protection, trust in the staff, trust in the correction and the direction. And if you'll do that, you will find a little less anxiety and stress and worry and fear and a lot more satisfaction in life. God desires to be your good shepherd today and every day. How about we let him do that to get us to that preferred future that each one of us really want? Okay, so Psalm 23, still there. That was the, again, the second part of verse four. Uh, It's it's one of those Psalms, when you're talking about stress and worry and fear and anxiety, it's one of those Psalms that maybe becomes part of our daily reading. In addition to wherever else we're reading, we maybe should read the 23rd Psalm right now, all, every day. Um, It's it's, it's that good. All right, so uh, moving on, wrapping this up today, I wanted to remind those of you that are connected to um, Eastland Church, uh, well, it's actually probably more than a reminder. This may be a first-time announcement, I think. <laughs> Sunday, I'm sure it'll be announced again. But we are uh, going to have a baptism service in May, about a month from now. And so if you are a part of Eastland Church and you are interested in being baptized, making public that commitment you've made to Jesus, personally, um, check in with us. Let, let us know your desire to do that. We're going to connect with you and follow up with you and uh, see if we can make that happen for you. So uh, be looking for that announcement uh, and connect with us if you're interested in being baptized. And uh, I think that's really all I wanted to mention today. Uh, there's some other things coming up in the month of May with uh, graduations and, well, if you've got a graduate, connect those things to us to look at that announcement, uh, do what do what needs to be done there. Uh, there's Mother's Day in May. There, there's, there's a lot of fun stuff going on with, with the month of May. So uh, we're looking forward to that together as a church family. I'm glad we get to do life together. Uh, we need each other. We are better together. Amen? Let's pray. Lord, we uh, thank you for this time together. Um, I thank you for the 23rd Psalm. I I got, uh, even as I'm talking this out with uh, everyone out there, um, I just again have another level of appreciation for the 23rd Psalm because it speaks into what you want to do in our lives. 
And um, there's so much good that you want to do in us and through us as the good shepherd. And today, Lord, we kind of focused in on your protection and your direction and your correction. Um, God, help, help each one of us to embrace you as that with a humble heart. Help us to, to always trust that you have the best version of us in mind. Help us trust that you have a better way than we do. Help us to believe how incredibly much you love us. Maybe that's the first thing we need to establish every day we wake up. Reestablish every day we wake up and truly believe it. The fact that you love us with an unfailing love. That you loved us so much that you sent your son Jesus to die on a cross for us. And the more we're convinced of that love, the more believable your correction and direction become in our lives. So I think it all fits together, God. And uh, I, just, I just thank you today for the reminder of you as, as shepherd to each one of us. I, I'm thankful today for, for myself that, I, that I, I don't have to figure out life on my own. I don't want to because <laughs> I'm not good at it. And I'm thankful today that you're willing to do that for me. And you're willing to do that for everyone else out there. Help us to lean into that. Help us to embrace that. Help us to truly know who you are. And help us to seek after what you want. And we pray all these things in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, it was good being with you today. Another midweek, April 21st. Finish the week strong. You can do it. You've got it. It's not because you can handle it, but it's because God can handle it. So give it all to him. Nothing's too big for him. Trust in him. Believe in him this day. He loves you like crazy. We'll see you again soon. God bless.